Your word declares that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we confess our sins to you, imploring your forgiveness through Jesus Christ. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you. And for the sake of Jesus, he offers grace and every blessing. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, in his stead, as if he were standing here before you today, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Filled with joy and the forgiveness we have, I invite you to stand and share the Lord's peace with one another, with those around you, and remain standing for our call to worship as well. God's peace, Rich. Great to see you. God's peace, John. God's peace, Fred. God's peace be with you. It's wonderful. It's great to see her. Yeah, she's up and at him, isn't she? We remain standing for our call to worship and we speak responsively. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come, let us worship him. Alleluia. God bless your worship here today.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us that we may not be lost forever, but follow you, rejoicing in the way that leads to eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our children's lesson. Good morning, everybody. How's life? How's school been going for you guys? Good. So one cool thing about school that you might not have anticipated is you can lose a lot of things in your house 
but now you can lose a lot of things at school. And sometimes when you lose things at school, they end up in a basket, probably a little bigger than this. What does that say? Lost and found. found. How many of you guys have been to the Lost and Found already this year? Anyone? Yep. (laughs) Let's see what we have in our Lost and Found today. Oh, man. Who lost their VBS shirt? This is the coolest shirt I've gotten all year. It's got a big lion on it. Anyone? No? No No one's? Uh, Anybody let their cow out this morning? Not bring him in? Nope. Maybe a flashlight? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, it doesn't even work. Nobody wants that. Screwdriver? Any, anybody need a screwdriver? Well, anybody lose a screwdriver? Oh man, somebody left a book. How are you gonna get your homework done? It's my book? Yeah, probably it is. <laughs> How about a little sheep? Anybody lose their sheep this morning? No? Hey, wait, here we go. Here's the prize. Look at that. Here's a coin. It's a 50 cent. Oh, it's a dollar coin, actually. It's a whole dollar. So today we're gonna hear. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the lost have found. So in our Bible lesson today, there's two stories of people losing things. There's a shepherd who loses a sheep, and then there's a woman who loses a coin. And in these stories, the shepherd, he goes out of his way. He leaves his 99 sheep to go find the one that's lost. And then the woman who loses the one coin, she searches diligently. She can't stop looking until she finds it. So how do you guys react when you lose things? Do you kind of have the attitude, oh, I could probably just buy another one? Or do you spend a lot of time looking for that thing? Yeah, I usually spend a lot of time looking for things. That's about half of my life sometimes. So God has made us, you know, he's made us his children. And even though we're his children, we get lost sometimes. And because of that, God sent his son to us, his son that seeks and finds us. And that's really, really special. Without Jesus, we would just be lost and no one would be finding us. So thanks be to God that we have Jesus who's lost us, who has found us when we're lost. And thank goodness God has sent his son Jesus for us. So let's go to God in prayer and thank him for what he's done for us. Dear God, God, thank you you. for finding us us. when we're lost. And also, thank you for not giving up on us. And God, thank you for Jesus. In your name, amen. The kids are going back to their seats, and before the choir sings, at this service we have a blessing for our third grade students. Yesterday there was a a discipleship workshop for our third graders, our third grade families, and these discipleship milestones were meant as an opportunity from having more than just baptism, confirmation, and then sending off from high school, having more mile markers in between in these uh, points of faith. And so Uh, If you were some of those families that participated in the discipleship uh, workshop, I guess you guys are reluctant to come forward. Yeah, I get it. Oh, there we go. Strength in numbers, guys. There we go. Encourage one another. That's what church is for. We encourage one another. Well, some of the things that they learned about yesterday uh, was about, you can be right there. It's just fine. Yeah, right there. It's just fine. Some of the things that they learned about is being in the Word and the importance of studying God's Word and also encouraging them to um, do their own personal devotions. I guess you guys did an activity learning how to, uh, where everything is in the Bible, and when you figure that out, let me know. Uh, So with that, uh, my understanding is you guys have personal blessings that you have prepared, and so I'll let you um, speak them individually. Let's start with the Scots, and then we'll go with the Smiths. And then I'll say a, a prayer of blessing for you all as well. Lord, we just pray that God continues to bless you and use your courage to do his will on earth. May the Holy Spirit continue to work in your lives. And we just want to God on you for all the help that they hope they discover the life topic. We are a child of God and we pray and continue to bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. First Timothy. Don't let anyone look down on you for being 
We pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have richly poured out your blessings on your people, and especially we see your blessings today in these families before us. Continue to bless them and to make their homes truly Christ-like. May you reign in the hearts and lives of these parents and third graders. Bless them with your spirit to inspire them to live out the Christian faith wherever they go. Strengthen the family ties as they dig into your word through devotions and as they gather in prayer. Grant these things for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, thank you. You guys can return to your seats. And now we will be <laughs> blessed by the Sanctuary Choir.
first reading for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost comes from Ezekiel 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture? that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, and to drink of clear water, that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet. And must my sheep eat what you have trodden with your feet, and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder, and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey. And I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the first chapter of 1 Timothy. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example of those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed Fear the Lord, you his saints. For those who fear him Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Alleluia. This man receives sinners and eats with them. I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, 
He lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, If she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. This time we have the opportunity to confess our common faith in the face of an unbelieving world using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our message hymn. Our message hymn may be found in your pew hymnals or on the screens, and we'll be singing verses 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, 
we come as guests invited to your table of grace. May we feast on the word you have given to us. Amen. So today, this might excite you. We're going to talk about the lost chapter of the Bible. Sounds like something an archaeologist discovered. And no, we're not going to talk about the Apocrypha. We're talking about Luke chapter 15. It's the parable of the lost sheep and the lost coin. And it's followed up by the parable of the prodigal son or the forgiving father. So it's great to read these parables in order, in succession. Now I know football season started and uh, drafts has been made. I bet some of you guys have ran the numbers. Statistics are pretty important to fans of any sport. I bet you can appreciate the progression of the stats in the parable. There's one sheep out of a hundred that's lost. Not too bad of a ratio. It's just one sheep. You know, you still have 99. Maybe you need to recount. How about one lost coin out of 10? That's a little worse. Maybe you know the feeling. I was there the, my first day in Oklahoma. I was uh, on the road and I was warned about 20 miles before I exited the highway that I needed exact change at the toll booth. <laughs> and I thought, okay, now I have a problem. Uh, I already had a host of people waiting for me because I was driving pretty slow. I was about an hour behind what I should have been, or maybe more. <laughs> and I knew that when I got to the exit on the highway, I didn't have the right change. I knew I'd paid about a buck 35 earlier and I wasn't ready for it again. I had about three quarters left and that was it. Now in my truck, I have a roll of quarters. I'm usually ready to go, but I wasn't driving my truck that day. I was driving the U-Haul, uh, but I did have a backup plan. I was pulling my wife's car and I thought, there we go, that's a gold mine. I'll be set. <laughs> I knew there had to be something back there so when I got to the toll booth, I rushed out of the door, I lowered the wheel guard on the trailer, I unlocked the car, opened the door, and I searched. And I came up short. I, came, I, had, I found one quarter and one dime. So if you're, doing, if you're running the numbers, you can tell that I am still about a quarter short. Now, nobody had come up behind me, so... I was thinking, I can't really panhandle my way out of this one. <laughs> so my last resort was to look on the ground. And wouldn't you believe it, right by the coin catcher, there was one quarter, what I needed. So I probably stepped on, it on, my, stepped on that quarter on my way out of the truck, just rushing. But someone else's loss became my fortune. And uh, now I have Pike Pass, so life is good. <laughs> So the woman in this parable, she came up short as well, one coin short, which doesn't sound like much. Uh, it was definitely worth more than the quarter that I found. Uh, this coin was worth about a day's wages. And I have a friend who just bought one of these ancient coins, one of these denarius, and he paid about 160 bucks for it. So that's, uh, that's about a day's wage. That's a good day's wage. Even today, that's what it's worth. So 160 bucks, or maybe just put in the category of day's wage, that's, that's a large sum of money. So one lost coin is a really big deal. It's no small sum. And also, one lost coin is pretty noticeable. You, how many times do you count to nine before you realize you're never going to get to ten? You know that you have a lost coin. So let's pause there and remember what's happening outside of this parable being told. You know, these are the sermon series is the dinner conversations with Jesus. So who's at this dinner? What's being talked about? So we have the people invited. We have, well, Jesus. We have the tax collectors and sinners who are eating with Jesus. And then we have a, lot, a bunch of loud, grumbling, muttering Pharisees and scribes. So everybody was listening to Jesus. The Pharisees and scribes had their reasons. And the people, the sinners, they had other reasons as well. You know, they were probably really happy to hear what Jesus had to say. They were drawing near to him. They weren't trying to accuse him or anything like the, the scribes. So everybody's gauges, you know, the gauges of the crazy things that Jesus says sometimes, are probably pretty, pretty low after the first parable. The shepherd analogy is all throughout scripture. We just read it in Ezekiel. So after the reading of the parable of the lost sheep, uh, you might even skip the significance of the parable of the lost coin. You might think that we're just exchanging a sheep for a coin and a shepherd 
for a woman. But that's kind of how we hear it, but that's not how the original table guests heard it. So if you look at the history and the culture of the first century, there's three groups that make up the social hierarchy. Um, the religious leaders, they're at the top. That's the scribes, the Pharisees, and them, elders, chief priests. Uh, they're the people that had the money. They had the power. Um, then there was the common folk. There's a lot of them. And then we have the people who are in the parable, to, or in the story today, the people who committed public sins, heinous sins, you know, sins that they repeated over and over again, and everybody knew it. Now, these are the people, these are the tax collectors and sinners that are at table fellowship with Jesus. So the real problem with these tax collectors and other sinners like them were that they weren't permitted to enter the temple to offer sacrifices. So offering sacrifices was the way in which a person continued to remain part of God's kingdom, part of the family of believers. So tax collectors and other people, like maybe prostitutes, they were barred because they were too far gone. They were too bad of a sinner. And believe it or not, all Gentiles, anybody who's not Jewish, were in the category of people who couldn't enter the temple to offer sacrifices. So if you couldn't offer sacrifices in the temple, that means your sins weren't atoned for. And even being around these people, these sinners, would make you ceremonially unclean. So the Pharisees and the scribes were watching Jesus do the unthinkable, sit and eat with sinners. And Jewish society was based on social status, so you wouldn't dare sit with the people who were too far gone and too lost. So as these groups sat and ate, they might be wondering, what's the difference between the parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost coin? Well, to begin, changing the protagonist, the main character in the story, was a really big deal. Going from a male shepherd to a woman wasn't just by chance. While the shepherd represented God seeking the lost, the woman represented the church, who represents the body of believers. So Jesus is tr trying to tell us that as the church, he wants us to have the same heart as God does to seek and save the lost. We should also have the same rejoicing heart as God. The woman represents the church that Jesus wants us to be, as Holy Trinity. So thinking a little more deeply about the table guests, the tax collectors and sinners, when they couldn't enter the temple, what happened? Jesus, the Son of God, came and ate with them. The temple came to them. You know, talk about table service. When the sheep was lost and the coin was lost, there's nothing that sheep or coin could have done to been found. The, the sheep and the coin are passive in this story. All they could do is be passive. The only actor is Jesus. You hear that common phrase, Jesus does the verbs. And likewise, we're also passive. There's nothing we could do to be found. It might be easier to think of yourself as a coin than a sheep. You know, a sheep can roll around, it can bag, it can scream, but a coin just lays there being passive. So then comes Jesus, and Jesus does all of the work for our salvation. You know, Jesus does the verbs. Jesus did all of the work on the cross. Jesus did all of the suffering, all of the bleeding, all of the dying, and all of the rising. Jesus took on my sins and your sins and the sins of the world so that we can be forgiven. When we couldn't enter the temple, Christ died for us. When we couldn't clear ourselves of our sins, Christ died for us. When all we could do is be lost, Christ died for us. Jesus sacrificed himself so that we could sit at table fellowship with him and eat his body and blood and be forgiven. Forgiven of our heinous sins, forgiven of our public sins, forgiven of our private sins, forgiven of all of our sins. And what's our response to this? What's our response to our sins being forgiven? It's rejoicing. What's our response to a newborn being baptized? It's rejoicing. How about another person being baptized and added into the family of believers? Another person being forgiven of their sins by the washing waters of baptism? What's our response to that? It's rejoicing. What's our response when we remember our baptisms? It's rejoicing. What's our response when we remember what Jesus has done for us? It's rejoicing that our Father in heaven has sent his Son to seek and save the lost to die and rise for our sins. 
So what can we do after we eat the bread and the wine and the body and blood in Holy Communion? We can rejoice. We can walk away from the table rejoicing the forgiveness that came only through Jesus. Just like the shepherd rejoiced with his friends and the woman rejoiced with her friends and neighbors, we too can rejoice with the angels in heaven over one sinner who repents. We can rejoice in the work of the Holy Spirit, rejoice that we can be empowered by the Holy Spirit to carry out the Great Commission to make disciples of all nations. Rejoicing when disciples are made in our neighborhoods and when disciples are made in our circles of friends. We can rejoice when the Great Commission is carried out by baptizing all nations and teaching them all that Jesus has commanded us. And finally, on the last day, rejoicing with those who believe and are baptized. So praise God that he has invited us to his table and offered us his son, Jesus, for our forgiveness. And praise God we have the opportunity to rejoice with our Savior, rejoice with the gifts that he's given us. You know, we are the lost who have been found. The table has been prepared for us, it's been prepared for the lost ones, the lost ones who have been found. Praise be to God. Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all others according to their needs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you came seeking and finding sinners like us. Mercifully, you have brought us back into your fold and have now gone to prepare a place for us in your Father's house and a seat at the table for your great feast of victory. Let your Holy Spirit work in our hearts and lives that by faith, we too would seek the lost and rejoice with all of heaven when sinners are brought to repentance. Lord, in your mercy, O Lord of life, we give thanks and praise to you for the new life granted to Robert and Megan Lee 
At the birth of their daughter, Alexandra, this past Monday, grant continued strength to mother and child and keep baby Alexandra safe in the care of your holy angels until she may be brought to the waters of holy baptism. As we rejoice with the Lee family, we also pray for those celebrating the blessing of life as they mark their anniversaries this week. For Patty Frenier, Katie Kruger, Olivia Giles, Jamie Perkypile, Jaron Clifton, Amy Durst, Ingrid Olstead, James Durst, Cheryl Rood, Alicia Henry, Nathaniel Gears, Ron Schlesinger, Robin Hanley, Landry Johnson, Sydney Johnson, and Darian Owens. Let them continue to experience and let them be a blessing through every aspect of their earthly life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of love, we pray for those celebrating marriage blessings this week as they mark their anniversaries. For Donald and Joanne Knutson, Keith and Allie Miller, Harold and Hazel Stockstill, and Troy and Tammy Hitzman, let the love of these couples grow stronger for you and for one another through every joy and sorrow they experience until that day when one shall lay the other into your arms for eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Great position of body and soul. Embrace with your mercy those in need of your healing and comfort. We lift up to you Keith Onnes, George Breesh, Pam Dewitt, James Durst, Karen Gardner, Patricia Glasser, Lynn Klein, Chad Longauger, Louise Maine, Carlene Nampkin, Rose Renner, Renee Rosanelli, Brenda Schlesinger, Jerry Shrum, Kylie Young, and all others on our prayer list and in our hearts. You know their needs, O Lord, and so we pray your healing power would attend them according to their need of body, soul, or mind. Lord, in your mercy, God of all comfort, we lift up to you all those who are mourning the, lo the loss of a loved one. We lift up to you Harlan and Jenny Hinches and their family as they continue to mourn the loss of Harlan's father, Gene. And for all the family and friends of Verna Holtzen who went to be with her Lord last Sunday. In the midst of grief, let the healing counsel and consolation of the Holy Spirit continue to direct them to see Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life to all who believe. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time I invite our ushers forward as we worship our Lord by receiving our offerings.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given to us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, all signs of your unfailing love. Graciously receive now these offerings and first fruits and use them and us for the continued building up of your kingdom as we seek the sinners and the lost sheep of the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. We are blessed and privileged once again as our Lord Jesus does indeed say to you today, come unto me, come and take this bread and this wine, his true body and his true blood given for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. I would instruct or invite you to look at the about our the Lord's Supper on the back of your bulletin if you uh, have any questions and uh, in order to examine yourself prior to communion, I invite you to stand for our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give thanks it is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who out of love for his fallen creation humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. To God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in his holy church forever and ever. Amen. Christ died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this holy eating and drinking of our Lord and Savior's true body and blood strengthen you and keep you steadfast in the one true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue with our post-communion canticle. pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. This man receives sinners and eats with them. There is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in God's peace and have a blessed week.